All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are listening to us. This is Jibe Talking. Um, We are recording at um, Jolly Rogers Sailing Club in Toledo, Ohio, where pirates come to play. You can say that now. That was the pirates back there. Um, I am your host today, uh, Christina Columbus, and I have my co-host, uh, Ted Mount. Uh, and today we are here, um, talking with some folks, um, from the, uh, Lake Erie Inner Club Cruise, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, um, before we begin. Uh. My name is Heather McBriar, and I'm the event planner for the Lake Erie Inner Club Cruise. I've been the event planner for since uh, 2004, so I've been doing this since uh, for about 20 years. And I'm not originally from Erie, but I'm married into the Great Lakes and uh, learned how to sail because of my husband and his family, and they've been doing this a long time. So. Who wants to go next? Gibby, you can go next. Okay, fine. <clears throat> My name is Gibb Blasel. I am from Erie, Pennsylvania, and I have been sailing my entire life. Uh, I'm soon to be 85, so I started at age eight with my brother, and I'm probably the oldest living person who has ever sailed in the Inner Club. My oh. first Inner Club started before the Inner Club. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> anyway, that's me. And I've sailed everything from uh, from big boats to uh, racing models. Okay. David. Uh, my name is David McBriar. I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, fifth generation Erie, Pennsylvania. So glad to still be hanging the flag, flag there. Uh, I hail out of the Erie Yacht Club, and I've been an avid sailor my entire life and have raced – Everything from uh, IOR boats to MUM 30s to Cape 31s to J70s, uh, both both ocean and uh, Great Lakes sailing. Oh, that's quite so a bit. Pl- pl- pleasure to have you guys doing this podcast for us for the Lake Erie Inner Club. Oh, we're having and, fun. Uh, yeah. Look, look, we're all fellow pirates. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Hey, uh, I have to ask Heather, I have to ask you a question. Have you been doing the event? For 20 years because you're good at it or because no one else will take it over? <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak to that. She's doing it because she's good at it. There we yeah. go. Yeah, because if you didn't say that, Gibby, somebody else would be taking it over. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, You know, I, when I moved to Erie... Um, I, I had to like start over and figure out what I wanted to do with my life in terms of, you know, starting to have kids. And sure. um, I actually got connected with the other woman that used to run the Lake Area Club Cruise who since passed away. But um, I actually, it ended up be- becoming a career for me in the sense that I became an event planner. I had my own business oh, because I started. So you're good at this so kind of cool. stuff. Okay. Well, yeah, so that, yeah, but, um, but I, I learned how to sail because of my husband, it's a blast and I've done a lot of the inner club cruises as well. Now I don't cause I'm, I'm sort of running it solo. So I drive around. So I have the perspective of meeting them all in ports and planning the parties and, you know, merchandise, all that stuff. Maybe they can be our sponsor for this one. Then she can sponsor her own show. Oh, you, you <laughs> never know. You never yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. It could take you on the road. There you go. There you go. Hey, um, it kind of how this came about is, you know, we are all, uh, most of the stuff we've done has been on Western Lake Erie. And I wanted to know, you know, what was going on on the other half of the lake? Cause I know I see boats and, and, and I saw you guys and thought, you know what? I wouldn't mind learning about this now who can give me. And I heard, I heard it, Gibby, I heard you're the guy. Give me a little bit of a history of this Lake Erie inner club cruise. Well, let's see. The Lake Erie Inner Club cruise started as what was known as the Annette Cup oh. uh, back in the early 1900s. Oh, my word. Uh, and actually, in the 1800s, and there was a group from the Erie Yacht Club that, that sailed across to Port Dover, and the race was 
time to go along about the time of Dominion Day in Canada. Uh, and then there were several races that were involved. First, it was the Annette Cup. And then because there were boats that started to pick up and go into it, and everybody wanted to win, they created a thing called the Bruce Bell, where it was a past performance handicap type thing. And so sooner or later, if you sailed the race long enough, you won a trophy. And uh, I can't tell you quite when they started to invite other boats to come in from other yacht clubs. But then they had a, it was called the Invitational. So along about in 19, let's say 55, if you sailed uh, the, the wasn't called the Inter Club, it was called the Inesco. And if you sailed in that, there was a possibility you could win four or five trophies, uh, uh, depending upon the, the, where you lucked out in the fleet, I guess. Uh, so, and then, and I think because there were a lot of Buffalo boats, uh, they decided to make it a, a cruise versus a race so that you could get all sorts of boats into it from different yacht clubs. And then, of course, the the racing uh, developed in the, the different races uh, from, from Port Dover to Maitland to Port Colburn, to the Canoe Club, to the Buffalo Yacht Club, to Dunkirk, New York. All those different varieties of races were were a product of the uh, what was now the Interclub Cruise. But there was a lot of a lot of Buffalo boats, and, uh, and it still is. There's still still a lot of Buffalo boats, and so that it sort of became a family type of sailing, on that on this end of the lake, and mothers, fathers, and kids sailed, and everybody had a good time. So which club kind of heads it up? Is there one particular club that's kind of in charge of it? I'd say the Erie Yacht Club. All of us that run it are, are, are from the Erie Yacht Club, but there's a committee that meets once a year at the Buffalo Yacht Club, and we have representatives from from the Dover Yacht Club and Buffalo Yacht Club and Port Colburn as well as Erie. But uh, Dave Dave's dad has kind of been the – mainstay for the past i would say 30 years and so dave runs the website i do the event planning and all the registration and all that used to be here but now it's online for yacht scoring so it makes it a little easier i think like, everybody's yeah. kind of gone to that yeah give, give me, you would it's, say a group, though, it's a group that, effort it's a group effort yeah i mean it's you have you have all you have all these clubs that have come together to so, right, so the Buffalo Yacht Club, which is the oldest yacht club on Lake Erie, which was built in 1860, and it's the and the Buffalo Yacht Club is the third oldest in the United States. So there's a lot of history coming out of the Buffalo Yacht Club. And the so you've got the Buffalo Yacht Club, and then they have a summer station called the Buffalo Canoe Club, which is over in Canada. Um so they have docks over there, and then there's another yacht club over there called the Buffalo Canoe Club. They're a, fa- they're a founding member as well. The Erie Yacht Club uh, and then the Port Dover Yacht Club have always been mainstays. And then there's another club called the Sugarloaf Sailing Club, which comes out of Port Colburn, Ontario, which is at the beginning of the Welland Canal, where you go up to Lake Ontario. Um, so you have all these founding clubs that all participate on a committee to make sure that this event keeps going forward. Now, how many boats did you have last year? Do you know? I have that information. Uh, Last year we had 35 boats participate. We break them into various classes. So if, if you're an avid racer and you want to be in a racing class, you can, you can participate. We, we race under the uh, perf handicap system. Um, the biggest year we've had, we had 60 boats on our 50th anniversary. So some of the old, some of the old legacy boats kind of came back to participate. Uh, but we've been averaging about 35 boats, uh, post COVID. That's, that's quite yeah, a few I was boats. Say, right before COVID, right before COVID, we were in the forties, almost fifties. So we've dropped quite a bit since COVID, but we're bringing it back. So now I know I know I think I saw on your website that um, 
some of the stops, if you will, are in Canada. Um, now, I have, I mean, I have heard about it, but how hard is it? Like, if you go from here and you want to, and you you port in Canada, like, how does that work? Well, you have to clear customs for one thing. Okay, and, and I think they for a while. If you use Erie as a starting point, the first race would go across the lake to Port Dover, and then it would come back into this country, and then it would go back into Canada, which created a real problem with customs because you had, let's say, 10 people on 40 boats, and it's 400 people trying to clear customs going both ways, uh, and it just it didn't work. So I think, David, if I'm Correct. Now, most of the they don't come back into the, this country unless it's the last stop. That's correct. Yeah. yeah the, the, so the good news is the U.S. system and the Canadian system they're they're starting to share more data. Uh, we in Canada we use an app called the uh, it's Canam K A N or sorry C A N A M, and we typically have one person in charge on the on the boat. To it doesn't it doesn't have to be the skipper or the captain, uh, but we just have one person that collects everybody's passports. They enter all the data into the app, and um, it's it's really helped simplify it. It does it does take some time to clear customs, but that's normally when we have our first cocktail after racing on the boat, and we hang out as a crew until the until customs clears us. So it gives us a little gives us a little downtime. So to, how, how long does to it make up your ahead. lies? Downtime to make up your lies. <laughs> Talking like a, a true sailor. Um. So if somebody wanted to participate in your race, they would need to have a passport. Yes. That's, okay. Yes, ma'am. Correct. And they also need to make sure that uh, one of the things that we've learned over the years is you have to make sure that your crew is eligible to go to Canada. So you can't have any uh, violations, um, maybe a DUI offense. To be able to enter Canada via boat, um, the entire crew needs to be able to clear customs. So felons are a no-no then. That's right. <laughs> and, they will, and they will stop you. I mean, so if, you're, if you have, you're creating a crew, you've got to really interrogate them because... We did get stopped one time because the guy had a, had a wasn't a drunk driving, but it was a more serious violation than that. And they damn near threw him out. So, I mean, had him leave Canada was only because somebody was a good bullshitter that he was able to stay in. Yeah. Back in the day, they'd come down on the on the on the docks, and you'd have to pass, you know, right there in person. But at, since nine eleven, it got it got really strict. But I would say because of COVID, it got it, it sort of got easier because everything went to an app, and and it's a lot easier now. So in twenty twenty five, for the first time, we're going to go from Erie to, to Dover, then back to Dunkirk which we used to do a long time ago, but um, haven't in a long time because it was just so difficult to go from, like like Gibby said, to Canada, then back to the U.S., then back to Canada again. So Now, for somebody who's clearing customs on a boat, like what does that entail? Like what does that look like? I know I think about it like coming back from an international travel at an airport, but with a boat, you can kind of dock any. Are there specific places that you have to dock to go through customs? So with, with this have, event, if you're, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Gibby. If you're, if you were just sailing into Canada and not in a race, then you have to clear customs someplace where there is a customs agent or a phone where you can call the customs office. And once they've done that, then they give you a clearance number. And if you're, if they come to the, if the customs agent comes to the dock, they actually give you a slip of paper. You have to put in your someplace on your boat so it can be seen. And they, and those 
those permits are good for a certain number of days, depending upon how long you tell them you're going to be there. Okay. But, uh, in, in our case, it's pretty smooth. When you leave Erie, it's Port Dover, and, 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 but they have a they have an eight hundred number. If if you're just you know you decide you're going to sail across there and go in, and that's of course you have to have a passport, but uh, that's the they do they and they can incidentally they can and do come aboard your boat and inspect it because you can only bring in so many cigarettes and so many bottles of whiskey, so many bottles of wine, uh, <laughs> and and they can impound your boat. Don't forget the rum. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are sailors, so of course it's got to be rum. Now, I, I get the fun job of driving all the flags and all the T-shirts over, and every year I always have a fun time getting all that stuff over. <laughs> well, right now you just piqued Christina's interest because she's all about the T-shirts. We had to spend about 10 minutes on the past podcast discussing uh, T-shirts. So, so you do have shirts, we do shirts and sweatshirts and oh, sweat I mean, we've done shirts. a little bit of everything mugs and hats yeah we do a combination but i order everything and i have had different artists do different uh art pieces of artwork and um we've sold watercolors and we've, you name it we've tried it but that's kind of the lifeblood because we're we treat it like a, a family reunion in a way you know uh so we sell basically cash only for our for our t-shirts and put it in the bank if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i do so where do you get your shirts from uh we have a local uh vendor that i i've used for the past 20 years and uh we just give him the design and then i pick out all the, the items and then he silk screens and embroiders and and does it. it's called creative imprints here in area so good so yeah it's a, we we We've always found it's important to support local musicians, local artists, local local people that support the sailing industry. I agree. To to try to ensure that because when we go out to get sponsors, uh, we do do some fundraising. Uh, we we go to Port Dover. We try to get the restaurants that we participate in to try to give back to the event. Uh, businesses in Buffalo. Some of the, some of the sailors are happy to do in kind donations. Um, and maybe they don't want their name branded, but it, it really does take a community effort to keep this event going. Yeah. We don't have like a big sponsor, like a gill or, or something like that. Like some of these one design events are sort of cookie cutter events and ours is much more like a family. Like when you come aboard, I mean, you, every year it's like you meet the whole new cast of characters and, and people, some people have been like Gibby's been selling same with my husband you know, and now me for 20 years, you see the same faces and sometimes you don't see them until this event every year. So it's kind of like a big reunion. It's cool. So now I'm looking at your um, event site right now and I see it looks like it starts on June 22nd. Now is that, that's the first race day? Correct. Yeah. That's going to be the Saturday of the first day of race. No, that's June 22nd is a Saturday. Right. So that's, that's the first race. Uh, People typically show up Thursday or Friday if they're coming in by boat. Uh, so the boats will start to arrive at the starting point. So sometimes we start in Buffalo. Sometimes we start in Erie. Um, the 2024 event, we start in Erie, Pennsylvania at the Erie Yacht Club. So boats will start to arrive on Thursday and Friday morning to you know, you got to get the you got to get the ponies to the uh, starting line. Did did I see for the uh, the first race that you guys are like the first horn is at some ungodly hour of oh five thirty or something? Oof! Right, that's that's notorious because we uh, yeah they have a like a five forty five gun or six o'clock gun and then it's actually quite beautiful because all of the boats uh, upon the the gun end up popping their shoots and so it's like sunrise plus all the spinnakers oh. going out of the channel it's very beautiful very and nice one of the other interesting things about that time of the day in june is that the sun is coming around and going right down through the channel that you oh. enter lake Erion. yeah and it, i mean they're 
there's some really beautiful pictures that have come out of that thing. Now, what are the distances on, I see you got an Erie course and it says Erie to Dover. What are the distances on these races? I, I have that worked up. Um, let me give you, let me just step back one second. I'm going to just give you a little history of the event. Good. From, That'd be great. So, so right now it's, it's an annual event and it's for sailboats, um, who, who want to participate in racing. And we also invite people that like to cruise. Um, so maybe you're not an avid sailor, like racing sailor, but you want to go do a, you want to go do point to point and maybe do four to the five days. And you want to go just take your boat and move with a fleet of boats because it'll give you protection. Cause when you're moving with other boats, at least you got other people around you that if you do get into trouble, that you're at least a radio, you're a VHF radio call away. Yep. yep. Um, and plus you're, you're just, you're moving with numbers. Uh, so this year the event starts on, on Saturday, June 22nd, and it'll finish on Wednesday. So it's always a five day event. I, w- I would say probably 70% of the participants do the entire five day. And then, but then you have other people that might only do three days and they choose not to do the last two days because they have to go back to work or they can't make the full commitment. That work screws up everything, you know, I tell you. Um, so it, it, but, you know, the rate, the people that are trying to win the trophies, you have to do all five days. Uh, you can win individual, you can win individual days, but if you're going for the overall trophy of the Lake Erie Interclub cruise, you have to participate in all five days. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing, David, to remember is that a couple of those races in the beginning are for Erie boats only. Yeah, where it's part of their it's part of their yeah, boat that, of the yeah. year. It's part of the boat of the year type races. Gibby, yeah, Gibby, yeah, there used cup, to be a the net cup is the oldest freshwater sailing trophy in the world. Wow. Wow. Now do you have a jam and a perf class or just it or just a perf class? just a perf class okay the i know we've made consideration for the cruising class to start to put up spinnakers um the cruising class they they get awards but it's more it's more just for fun it's for participation we're trying to encourage boats to come join us and um you know again it's 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 trying to get people out using their boats most most boats sit in their slips Yes. We're trying to we're trying to encourage people to use their sailboats and, yes. and, and go and go explore some ports and enjoy the camaraderie of other clubs, other destinations. And a lot of the places we go to have great live music. They've got great restaurants. So and, and when you're moving and when you're moving with a crowd, it, it, it just makes it a lot more enjoyable. Don't you think that's why some of the people don't? go very far because they're they're worried about being on their own and i think you're right with being with the fleet you can you can call somebody and somebody will come and help you i don't think that has anything to do with it actually personally interesting okay i mean there's anywhere in any of these races in any of these events on this end of the lake you're pretty close to to uh to a port emergency port if you need it you're not too far away if you look at okay. the chart. Okay. Now, did I see in your rules that you're required to have three people on the boat at all times? That's a David McBriar question. Yeah, yes, yes, it is. Um, we haven't set the event up as a single-handed or a double-handed type event. Um, just because the days can be longer. Um, I mean, some days you can start racing. If, For example, if we're racing from Erie, Pennsylvania, we're starting in the Bay in Erie, we're racing across to Port Dover. If you have lighter winds, the cutoff, I think the cutoff time is like a six, maybe a six o'clock finish. There are long days on the water, uh, but just as a, the way we've set the event up and the rules up, everything is set up for a teamed t- approach. Um, that way you can have a navigator, you can have a driver. Um, it, we're just, we haven't, we haven't taken the, 
the approach yet. We haven't, I don't think we've had a lot of demand though for single and double handed participation. And, and we haven't, we haven't uh, basically addressed that issue because it hasn't come up yet. Sure. Sure. So if some historically, Go ahead. historically, the people who have sailed the race, they want to come back. If nothing else, they want to come back for the party. Yeah. I was going to say, do you have good parties? Do we have good parties? Is the Pope <laughs> Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, uh, about, there, what there about... Are, s- there, are some good, there are some good parties, absolutely. I mean, I've done the Mills parties. I've done the Putin Bay Week parties. Some of the, the Lake Erie Interclub Cruise still has a tradition of in, enjoying the festivities of the port. And as, as I've gone around the country racing... In, in different classes, I, I would tell you that we still have some of the best parties on the Great Lakes. What about if somebody from this half of the lake said, you know, I wouldn't mind coming over for a couple of days. Where would we where would we port our boat at? Do you guys got room over there for us? Uh, yes. At the Erie Yacht Club? Yeah. yeah. We can we can get a lot of people in there. Okay. Uh, they have a big have a uh, usually there's Slips that are available because people are out. And then we have a guest dock that is several hundred feet long. And there are other places in the club to port somebody to put them up. We get all the boats in when the beginning of the race, uh, when everybody everybody's in. You know, nobody is stuck someplace else or out on a keg. We get them all in. They raft them up. Yep. Yeah, the, the, Erie, the Erie Yacht Club is one of the largest yacht clubs on the Great Lakes. And then when we when we go to Port Dover, they're able to accommodate uh, multiple boats. They're able to we, we're able to accommodate sixty foot boats, all the way down to you know our smallest boats in the race are day twenty fours. Uh, we we race under the category three for the um, for safety. We just want to make sure boats have lifelines. That they're just they're they're, pro, they're they're properly fitted out to be able to go sail out in Lake Erie, which um, I don't know if you've done much sailing in the eastern end of Lake Erie. I was going to ask what, you about that, so speak to that. No, mine's been western. So my my personal experience is I, I believe the east end of Lake Erie has has relatively steep waves uh, with with much less time duration between them. So there's there's more frequency of waves, uh, which is more like running head on into a series of brick walls uh, from time to time as as they get steeper. Um, I've done a lot of sailboat racing out in the open ocean, and I find the Great Lakes in general have there's just more wave energy. Yes, and it can be a, it can be a little bit more violent just because the waves are compressed. We were talking about that earlier on a podcast when I was saying I'd been out to San Diego and sailed in the ocean a few times, and it's way different. Yeah, I mean, the the Great Lakes, especially Lake Erie, can be a little bit unforgiving at times. Um, They say if you can sail on Lake Erie, you can sail anywhere. You know, we were talking about that very thing, too. I, In fact, I was saying that when I was in San Diego, I was walking up the dock, and somebody said, so where do you normally sail? And I said, Lake Erie. The answer was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, I mean, think we the- lost your wife. She dropped it some way. The call got dropped. So if she's not talking, it's because she got dropped. Oh, Heather? Yeah. Yeah. She- I don't know. Do you want to try to call her back? We're going we're gonna to try to hook her back in, but just so you know. Yeah, and so, I mean, over over the years, it, it's been interesting. We've seen, like, we've, we've had, we, we, we have a lot of 40-foot boats in this event, uh-huh. but um, we've, we've seen people with steering quadrant issues. Um, on days with high winds, we've had people break booms. Of, of course, you're going to rip sails, right? Blown out spinnakers. Hold on one second. I'm going to try to get her in here. Hello. Are you back? Hello. Are you back? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened. That's yep. okay. All I'm right. Back. Go ahead. Talk about spinnakers. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, with, with, with higher winds, I mean, you can blow out spinnakers. You can blow out mains. We've snapped spinnaker sheets. We've snapped guys. Um, you'll be sailing along next to somebody and you'll see them blow out like a jib halyard. We've seen four stays shear off. Oh. 
Um, Having a bad we, day we, there. We've, we've seen a couple of people where they've dropped mass. Ooh. So the, um, the nice thing about five days at sea is you get various conditions. I mean, some days you'll be Gibby. Gibby's had probably many years where you motor for an entire day because there's no wind and you can skip, you could skip a sand dollar across the lake. And, and then you have other days where it's just a nice 25 knot day with some storm squalls blowing through. So you, you need to make sure that you've got a competent crew that can handle, that can handle all conditions. And if you aren't comfortable with the conditions, at least you have a very good, we call them the iron Jenny, which is the diesel engines. Hopefully, hopefully you have a good way to motor your boat. If uh, you want to reduce sail area and, and be able to be able to motor to the next destination. Now we mentioned how, what are some of the distances on some of the races? I know we were kind of alluding to that. So the, the Erie to Port Dover is approximately 40 miles straight line. Gibby, Gibby, you would agree with that number? Yeah, very, yeah, 42, 43. Yeah. You know, and if, and if, you have to, if you have to start tacking up wind, let's say, for example, we're sailing north towards Canada. Yeah. And you have to, ta- and you have to tack up wind all day. It's probably going to add 30% to the distance. Yeah. Yep. Um, predominantly the nice thing about this event is it's predominantly a downwind race because the prevailing winds are typically west to southwest. So you're able to you're able to get your spinnakers up, you can get your A-sails up, you can get your traditional symmetrical kites up, and you can go do that 40 miles. And you're and you're typically moving at hull speed or maybe a little bit less. Because most of the boats in our fleet are non-planing hulls. So yeah, but that most of the most of the distances are between 40 to 20 miles per day. Okay. Um, and when you cross Lake Erie, you also have a big thing on the other side of the lake that sticks out called Long Point, which is a navigational hazard uh, if you don't happen to know it's there. Uh, okay. But it also has different currents that run around it, and it's shallow, so you can you can get in trouble there. Uh, and then there's there's two triangular races. Okay. Now, yeah, so yeah, we do some course race and they're long distance course races. So when we we'll sail over, we'll do the distance race from Erie to Port Dover. The second day or the third day, depending on every year we kind of mix it up a little bit. This year we're starting with a course race in Erie where we're actually going to spend two nights at the Erie Yacht Club before embarking across to Canada. But as Gibby was saying, we'll do these 17, they're like 17 to 20 mile triangle courses um up in over over in canada we'll race up to turkey point race out to the corner of long point and then back to port dover and those are always that's always great sailing uh gibby mentioned that long point's very shallow at the tip because it's a sandbar that sticks off of canada but it's also the deepest point in lake erie where it's 210 feet so you can also have some of the steepest waves or the most, I wouldn't say the steepest waves. It's actually the most forgiving wave because you've got a lot of water flow where it's not bouncing off the bottom. So kind of like an ocean feel there. Yeah, it's nice. You can get, you can get some nice sets rolling through there. <laughs> my, my first inner club, we finished at like lunchtime <laughs> and I thought that was normal. I mean, we were, we were speeding over there. It was like we were surfing. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, Heather, Heather had the first Heather. I, Heather had the opportunity to race. We had a boat called Aries. It was an IOR forty-seven. It was a two-tonner, and it was it was blowing thirty-five. We had a kite up all day. We were hitting sixteen knots. Oh, and we we caught the ten. Like we were bridge. driving a car. We started the race at five thirty in the morning, and we we caught the ten o'clock. I think it was like the ten or the ten thirty bridge over into Dover. Those are, so any any, those are any whales? Get drunk, any, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish you up. Get drunk by noon. Uh, 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 
Uh-huh. I would say the standard is they they start rolling in. The early boats come in at three, anywhere between three and five. Wow, you were cruising. Yeah, so huh? Wouldn't you say? Well, I guess sometimes it's two o'clock or something. Yeah, it makes yeah the big yeah the boat boats today are getting a little bit faster. But one of the great things we have about our event is you have a lot of boats that are still averaging like six knots. Okay. Five and a half, five and a half knots is like their hull speed, right? So it, the harder the wind blows, the boat doesn't get there faster. Nope, nope. Um, one one thing, Ted. I just, I, I, Ted. One thing I want to say though is, right? We all know the movie Captain Ron yes. from back in 1992. We were talking about that on the last show. Yep. And we we always say, you know, if anything is going to happen, it's, it's going to happen, happen out there. there. <laughs> <laughs> It's the old, the old famous quote by Kurt Russell, who plays the role of Captain Ron, who was uh, with Martin Short, yep. his, his, the uh, Mary, Mary Kay Place, whom he liked to nickname Kitty, uh, who was worried about not knowing how to drive a boat. He just, you know, just wanted to try to reinsure that the best way to learn is just go do it. You're right. You're right about that. What if someone, what if someone listening says, you know, I, I would, uh, let's say from the western side over here says, I would like to be in that, but I, I don't want to take my boat over there. You got to ever have people looking for crew. Uh, we do. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to stand up. I run the website and uh, right, I was looking at it. Uh, right now we don't have a crew board, but I'll make sure to get a crew board stood back up again to try to encourage people to come in and participate with us if they're not from our regions. Um, the other thing, we, we've been getting more and more smaller boats beginning to participate. Um, there's a J24 that races. Oh, okay. Um, and I think, I, I think they'll tell you it's some of the best sailing they've ever done. Um, you show up with the right crew. And, they're, they're, you know, J24s were built to go do distance racing by mm-hmm. design. Mm-hmm. The other class that's starting to grow is the J80s. Oh, um, that's the I, J80s. Those are nice. We have um, we have a, a team out of uh, Port Dover, uh, run by John Valley, who has done quite well with his J80. There's a team out of Erie, uh, the Dreckies, who had a J80. They just recently sold it. They moved over to a Far Thirty. But the uh, yeah, the J80 out there is actually a great boat, it, 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 and it seems to be able to survive Lake Erie on these long distance races. So something to consider. You could trailer a boat in. We do have places to uh, pull the boats, and we do have places to launch them if if you wanted to trailer in. What do you say normally are the size boats you're seeing in there? Like you see a lot of twenty sevens and. 30s and... the biggest class is a j35 i would say okay yeah 30 boats are getting smaller but i mean we've seen we've seen on this end of the lake the boats got bigger but as the as with inflation and the price pressures the, the price of sailing increasing my guess is boats are going to start to go back to the 30 33 foot size and and you know more at the J80 type size because it's affordable because if if you have to buy sails and you got to buy equipment and you got to yep. pay to you got to pay to participate I, I think the economics is is starting to play out and and boats are going to start to be more more in the thirty to thirty range over here when they do the Spectrum they use the J80s for the for the kids for the Spectrum sailing. Hmm. That seems to work out real well with the kids being able to get them on and off, and they're just good boats, really. Yeah, they are. They're good yeah. boats. Pretty fast too, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, so if there was anything, if somebody for the first time uh, wanted to participate, I, you guys, it sounds like you guys are really encouraging of just getting people out there to race. You don't have to be like some crazy racer if you can handle your boat and you say i wouldn't mind it it sounds like this might be the place to give it a roll huh oh yeah we've had a lot of like we have some boats that bring on all their uh some of the youth sailing uh like the youth and they'll do a whole boat of you know teenagers 
And, you know, my son's done that. Um, there's a lot of family. Like some people will try it for the first time and just take their family on the cruising side of it. Is that I I don't know if Dave mentioned, but we do have a cruising class yeah, where did. you're not yep. racing, but you can just go. So there's it's not a, you know competitive, but you can you know just take your time and not have to worry about anything. And that, yeah, if you need a motor, you motor. But yeah, we're encouraging of all levels of skill. There's some really beautiful boats that are in these spinnaker classes. I mean, the the Trip Fifty Six, uh, Entrada. Uh, just looking mm-hmm. at some of these boats, I mean. These are some really beautiful sloops, some older style boats. And then you have some newer Dave ones. Barrick, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. That's Gibby's boat. Gibby, you should speak to the old boats. Gibby knows all about okay. that. That's because I'm old. <laughs> well, you said it, <laughs> no, Gibby, not you, us. Well, Gibby, yeah. you, you race on them. In our, in our yacht club fleet, your yacht club fleet, we have several wooden boats. Oh. And, <clears throat> Those wooden boats, uh, two of them are are big. They're, you know, they're, the Dreamer is six on fifty feet, fifty five feet, and uh, uh, and then we've got the uh, the Altair, which is a Rhodes twenty nine, and that boat is built in nineteen twenty nine. So there's some older boats. Oh my word! The wood. Oh yeah, so Alt that, Altair, Alt Altar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so in 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 our local racing here, that there, there sometimes it's not uncommon to have three or four or five wooden boats in our, in one of our weekly races. Wow. Yeah, the boat the boat that that's called Dreamer that Gibby spoke of is it's um it's a fifty it's just under fifty five feet, just and it has about a thirteen foot beam, and it was it was built by um it was built up in East Booth Bay, Maine, and it was a it's a, the designer it was an Alden uh, yacht, and it's it's great to watch that boat doing the five days of sailing, where they're out there stressing their wood mass and they're you know they're they're prop they're they're basically trying to get the hull moving full. Once once they get all their canvas up and they get that thing going hull speed, it's it's just an absolute beauty to watch sail by you. I mean, there's a sixty foot boat on here. Uh, what is it was called? Damn Yankee. Damn Yankee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean. Teddy. Wow, that's just amazing. You see all the gigantic boats, and then even still. You have smaller boats that want to participate. It's really exciting. Oh yeah, it's 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 like no other uh, sailing regatta, I think, probably in the world for that matter. But Dan Yankee has to usually moor out and you know find creative ways to get his crew into the parties. <laughs> there, there are upsides and downsides to, to larger boats. Trey, we need to, we need to go over there. Yeah, I mean, I I got a twenty eight foot, so. But you can, can you get off work for that long? Uh, that's a little hard, but you know, nothing a little advanced PTO can't fix, right? We could go. Well, we I could will go say, over this. Be, be, well, I would say that the other thing is, is we do break it up. So if you want to do just a portion of it, we started doing that for people that could only do, say, the Erie, Dover, and the Dover Dover course race because it's usually over the weekend. Um. So some people will do the first half and some people from Buffalo will come over and then do like the Port Colburn and the other half at the end of it. So our problem is it would probably take two days if we sailed straight just to get there. Yeah. I mean, cause it, it, yeah. it takes us about six hours, four to six hours from our port to the islands yep, to put in bay, you know? Yep. And so then you're looking at about, about another it. six hours to get. Well, if to, I can convince Trey to go see, I'm off in the summers cause I'm a, I'm a school nurse. <laughs> So if, if Trey will go, I, I would I would take a week and go. How close is the area to Presque Isle, the the state park? Is that's it, where that's where Erie, Pennsylvania is. Okay, so that's where the everything is happening at. So that, that's like that's cool because I, I I've done some work out there and stayed out at the state park for a day, and it's just beautiful out there. There's like the houseboats out there and stuff that people that li- yeah. live out there year round. I'm assuming year round, um, and it's just yeah, Brett. Presque Isle's magical. The uh, so the the Niagara was built in Misery Bay, right where you're talking about near the houseboats. Yeah. So the Niagara, 
the Niagara was built to beat the British in the War of 1812. And so the the monument, when you're down at Putin Bay and you're looking at the battle that was fought, the, the, the Niagara boat was actually constructed in Erie. And it's still it, the boat still hails there, and it still sails. There's a full there's a full replica of it that uh, goes out and works the Great Lakes. That and could just, be a whole other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we'd be up for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, set that set that podcast up. Get in touch with Heather. She uh, she'll get the right people. <laughs> I'm on, on that the call. board for that. I get sucked <laughs> into everything, you guys. That's okay. You're good at it. You're well, an ev- you're event planner. That's right. That's right. Let me, let but me the get main, the I, main course. Oh no, but the history is really, I, I mean, that's why I like Gibby here because it really is incredible. Like we have the Longhorn uh, or sorry, the long point club, which is if you've sailed 25 years, you get a hat and the, you know, they usually hoist a big, some kind of a medal for you. And, um, and it's pretty sometimes amazing how many people have done it. That long. Cocktail party. I, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant if you just went aground at Long Point, you got to be in the club. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you're talking about. Well, I don't know. Did, did you talk about the parties yet? Yeah, he did. That's why Trey and I are talking about figuring out how to come over. Oh, All about the party. Did, did he talk about how we have these annual, like the, did you talk about the, um, like the daiquiri party and the the fish fry and all no. that stuff? Because I saw you had margarita. I saw you had a margarita night at one of them though. Yeah, that's the first one. But some of these have been dated back. I mean, it becomes sort of like these traditions that happen, and um, which is all kind of fun. And Dover is known for their perch, their eerie perch. Uh, we and, love perch over here too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we go over, and the typical run, which I think they've already said, is it's usually eerie. Leave at the crack of dawn. We have the re- registration in the in the margarita party that night, and usually a band. Then you have to like roll yourself you know, onto your boat or out of your boat or whatever needs to happen to get you up and at them and off to Dover. And then that next night, everyone eats at usually the Erie Beach Hotel, which is where you get these big platters of perch. And there's initiation stories and all kinds of fun things like that after your first time. So if it's your first time, we'll have to take you through the process. But um, Is it like crossing then- the equator or something? Yeah, you gotta have the King <laughs> Neptune. You gotta have the King Neptune ritual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, and then the, then you do the course race, and then the next night is the big party at the Dover Yacht Club, which is really fun. And they do the big uh, daiquiri party, and then there's a big another eerie perch fish fry, or some people choose to go into town, and then a band, which is usually our best band of the week, and people party pretty hard that night. And then they have to go all the way to Port Colborne, which is kind of a you know long haul. And that's been the traditional. And then then on to um, the Canoe Club, which is gorgeous. Uh, if you see pictures of that, but it's a really fun yacht club over in Canada. But it's Buffalo's, you know, Canadian sisters club, you know. And then usually finishing in the Buffalo Yacht Club. That's the traditional. But we do variations. Like this year, doing the Erie Course Race, we won't do that again for probably four years. Okay. So this isn't like, a normal year but we like to kind of add so that the clubs can make a little extra money you know if you haven't had two nights we'll give you two nights yep. every once in a while clubs like money you know we all need it you know yeah, yeah. And that, that that and that you know we always try to encourage live music at all the events we there's there's always great food there are rum parties um i know it, what the one of the rum parties is put on by a couple I, I think it's one of the boats that does it every year right they bring all the rum and they bring all the mixers and you know they get out they get out the blenders like they used to at cleveland race week when Les used to run the blender party down there kind of got that we've got that same kind of theme going on here um and then heather talked about the dinners at the local restaurants where you get the tradition and you get everybody wearing their their crew gear um you know, some people you get really funny. matchy matchy and funny. Yeah, so there's there's some good traditions there. You get some dancing and, and one of the nice things is most of these clubs we're not overly formal. We're not the New York Yacht Club where you have to show up in a three three piece suit. Um you, you can you can do you can do the collar you no know, no collared shirt and just everybody being themselves. 
So it's, it's a little bit more informal and just letting people enjoy summer. I like the sound of that. Right. I like the sound of that. Does anybody have anything else they want to ask? Uh, we we appreciate you guys coming on because this is something we had no knowledge about. And as we've been talking to you guys, we've been scrolling through pictures and your website and, and thinking it looks like a fun time. I just, oh, yeah. Can I can, can I give a shout out to some of the people that, that, that uh, do the event currently? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, um, we've, we've got to recognize Gibby Lacell. Gibby, Gibby, you've done every inner club. Or, no, or, I missed a few, David. You, did, you took I, a few this, years I, off? Uh, at this point in my life, I, I take a car to Fort Dover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't it's okay. I want to go with Heather. I don't want to I don't want to be out bouncing around in a lake anymore. I've done enough of it in my time. <laughs> I know I did I did go bounce around in the Falcon Cup last last summer. So uh, we did have um, one of one of our great pirates. His name was Peter Raber, and he passed away. Peter had done, I think, the majority of all of the interclubs through inception. He might have missed one year. Um, we talked about Dave Barrig, who owns a boat called Dreamer. He's a world class sailmaker uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania, who who has retired. He was building sails for tall ships, and he was also doing. Um, before the North sails started spinning everything out in Nevada, he was making racing sails and cruising sails for boats. And he was also making a lot of sails for ice boats as well as he, he's a woodworker. So he would build his own boats from scratch. Um, coming out of the Buffalo Yacht Club, we've got to recognize uh, Tom Lewin and his son, Tommy, and the entire uh, the crew. There's a boat called Sledgehammer, which is a J120. Uh, they've been a very successful team and, um, you know, they, they, they've won many inner clubs over the years. There's another team coming out of Port Dover, uh, skippered by John Valley and his whole crew. They've been very successful on many different boats over the years. Uh, coming out of Erie, Pennsylvania, we've got Pat Huntley, Tim Pulaski and the whole team, uh, they, They've sailed many boats over the years and they've won in many classes. And then you've got the, just the fun families like the Machinas, uh, the Nemics and they're run, they're, they're sailing boats like J one Oh nines. Um, yep. The Wolford family, uh, is coming out of Erie, Pennsylvania and Buffalo. It, I, we needed somebody on this call from Buffalo, but there's many teams out of Buffalo, the Whistler family, has been participating in this event for years. And we also mentioned Ted Johnson uh, with his, with his boat called Dan Yankee. And um, yeah, so there's, there's some serious, there's some serious talent. But the other thing you should mention is we have, uh, is the race committee is we have a race committee for this whole event, which is not an easy thing to put together. And over the years, we've had pretty incredible teams. Our, our race committee is out of um, Buffalo. And so they go the whole distance, but there's been many hats there, but I mean, they, they have to set out in you know, huge waves and uh, uh, they, they deal with a lot. So yeah, to go, to, to, go be the race, to go, to go be the race committee for this event where you have to do five days at sea and you're crossing lakes and you can be out there on days where it's blowing 30 so the, the power boats are moving around, they're rocking and rolling, they're burning a ton of fuel. But again, it's for them, it's an endurance race as well. <laughs> and and without them, we've actually a couple of years where the race committee wasn't able to move with the fleet. We actually had to have each yacht club run their own race committees. So that way we could finish and start boats. So we might have one race committee starting it and another race committee finishing it. Uh, we've had we've had to be creative in some years. Okay, mm -hmm. but okay. O overall, I mean, it's definitely something every sailor should have on their bucket list. Okay, if you like, <laughs> if you like a unique and thrilling experience on the water, um, it it surely shouldn't be missed. We've got sailors of all levels. Um, it is five days of competitive sailing. Whether you're a newcomer to the support or you're a seasoned sailor. 
uh, there's definitely something for everybody. And participation is it's just a matter of getting to the race course, whether you're crewing for somebody or you're bringing your own boat. Um, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. So you yeah, might as well be I there. I agree. I agree. Well, I think I, this was great. I'm glad we got to talk to everybody. Um, and uh, thanks for being on here. And before I leave you, before I leave you, uh, Trey, you can cut the rest of this out. Oh, is that your outro? No, I better not. I better do something better than that. Thank, <laughs> and I want to talk to you before I go off, though. Well, thanks for being with us today. And we will encourage people on this end of the lake to come over and to join your crews. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you.